Today, in this interview with Ferry Gazzoni, we'll be talking about the best ways to build high quality free backlinks with PR, how to pitch journalists in some processes that I've never revealed before. Plus, we'll break down this whole process step by step so that you can emulate it, get free access to that. And um, let's get straight into it. So how do you build backlinks? Yeah, straight to the point, right? Many might know we are doing digital PR for as a method of building links. I used to do lots of link building before digital PR and I used to guest posts and I used to outreach personally to like thousands of bloggers and guest posts, forum link building, link schemes, going out and asking links and then we give you the link back. I actually got a manual penalty for this, uh, for this method before wow. for yeah. large, larger scale, you know, a link exchange. I was always passionate about link building. I thought it's one of the hardest disciplines in like SEO. It's one of the hardest tasks to build links that are being appreciated by Google. And then in 2020, I've seen some digital PR agencies coming to surface like Rise 7 and Reboot Online. And, and I said, this is amazing. This is completely genuine. We have to figure this out somehow. And we started setting up a department and that's how I discovered digital PR. And ever since then, digital PR is the only way we build links for other clients. We scrapped every other SEO work and now it's only digital PR that we do. So like for anyone watching, if they wanted to get into digital PR, which I think is a really good way to get super high quality backlinks, right? From like real big publications. But for someone watching, like how would they replicate that process for their own website? They would have to first be a student of the industry. So you cannot just start in day one and say, yeah, I'm going to build links next week. Like it doesn't work like that. And it doesn't work like that for us either. We had months and months of tens of thousands of pounds invested into wages and processes to figure it out. So it's not going to happen overnight. So don't expect you, you're going to go out there and write something, send it out to 10 journalists and they, yeah, you get links. It doesn't work like that. So just setting the expectations, it's okay if you don't start off with a big bang. So they would have to start being students of the industry. Watch what journalists are writing about. Go on timeout.com, go on New York Post, go on the websites that are known for working, for picking up PR stories, like uh, stories from PR agencies, and study what they write about. Just go to Google and say, site New York Post, and, and come, and they say, expert reveals. And it will show you all the stories that have been written by the journalists and that have picked up stories from PR agency because expert reveals, it means it's most likely to be a story that was pitched by a PR agency. And just try to reverse engineer their thought patterns. Like how do they think? How do those journalists think? What do they need from you as a public relations professional? They always need experts. So try to find, if your client is an expert, then try to find stories that your client might help those publications with. A sleep expert. The journalists always need sleep stories like how to Fall asleep in five minutes. We know like a large part of the population struggles with that. And we know journalists are going to cover that topic. So just go out and study the news outlets for, let's say, a month and just immerse yourself mentally into, into the news agenda. See what they are writing about with advanced search operators and then start crafting something and then, and, and then start finding the right journalists. You can use tools for that, like Roxil or, or Cision or Vuelio. There are some, some tools that can help you find relevant journalists. So these are tools that you can basically connect with journalists via like Cision, did you say was one? What were the other few tools? Cision, uh, uh, Roxil Media, and, and then Muckrack and Vuelio as well. And um, I think there are a few more, but these are like the top tools in the industry. They start, I think they start from around 500 pounds a month up to, if you have a large license like we do, we pay like 100, 120,000 per year on licenses for these two tools for a larger team, but they start for pounds a month and they help you, you know, find, so you can literally search even for the titles that journalists have covered. And it gives you the list of journalists who wrote about the topic in the past six months. So you can filter the dates and that's how you find the right journalists when you have the story or for anyone not they're wanting to allocate that budget and uh, like 500 pounds a month, you can actually do, again, advanced search operators to find journalists and stories written about the same topic uh, previously. And then you can just manually find the emails. You can use maybe Hunter and Hunter. I think it's .io or Hunter.co yeah, yeah, yeah. to find the email addresses of those journalists. Uh, it's a cheaper service, but it's not as scalable because you would have to do the work manually. So you will find probably less journalists, but maybe they're going to be more accurate even than the Roxil. And then just send them the email with the pitch. It's a simple concept, of course. I make it sound really easy and it can, can be easy, 
but that's the process. Identify what the media is talking about, uh, write something in their style. So make sure the style that you're writing is not like a blog article style, because that, that's what I've seen the most common mistake of people starting out is like they write a blog post on like instead of writing a proper simplified report on their you know findings, they write a large like blog post and they start with the question, have you wondered why this blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, it, it doesn't work. It's got to be written in the style of a news article almost so the journalists can easily copy paste and extract the information that they need in the style that they are used to. That's yeah. what I noticed. For example, in my old company, when we were getting backlinks for their website, right? And this is way, way back, talking like 10 years, we used a company called Source Bottle. And they would basically write these press releases that were formatted totally different to your normal sort of blog post, right? It's like understanding the format that journalists would like and that they can easily work with. Whereas if you create a guest post, it's just going to go straight in the bin. Yeah, they're like, what's this? This is not how we work. This is like a blog post written for us. And sometimes some people send me like Google Docs with the press. Hey, Ferry, can you take a look at my press list? First of all, half of it is ChatGPT written and it smells, it smells. You can tell it's, it hasn't been formatted for the press. So you can tell the expert quote is actually a chat GPT quote, which by the way, could be okay if you just human edit it a little bit to adjust it to, to the style of the journalist. But the second, it looks like a blog post. It looks like a post written, as it looks like a content written for like a blog post, which should not be done. Yeah, we can come on to some ways to improve the manual editing of chat GPT content later. But just to recap then, so the process is basically like you reverse engineer big publications, you type something like site, colon, net site, an expert reveals, and maybe a niche. And just try and figure out, okay, what's trending right now and what's going to get topics. And then from there, Indeed. you want to you connect with journalists via like Cision, Roxil, Velio, right? Yep. What's the take on Connectively and Twitter, by the way, for this? Because I see some people recommending Expert Quote or Connectively, the new Harrow platform. Have you ever tried those? We have not tried them because for us, it is the slow lane. So like... Harrow, and that's what everyone knows. It's a term everyone uses now. The slow lane, you are reacting to journalist requests instead of being proactive and getting journalists to react to your pitch. So we, it's the other way around. We don't wait for journalists to come to us. We go to them before they even think they need our story. So we try to anticipate what they write about instead of, instead of waiting for them to come to us, right? So it's, I would say it's, Haro is great, and I think it's a great, uh, it should, should be done. But digital PR is the fast lane. It's the Autobahn in Germany. You have the Autobahn where there's no speed limits. That's digital PR. And Haro is, is like the A roads. It's like the, the single lane traffic. But I think it's still, Haro is still great. But we can try it because our process and systems are not built for getting Haro links. They're built for getting digital PR links. And then when you're writing that pitch and you want to write it in their style of writing, do you have any tips on learning how to create that same format that journalists would be used to? Yeah, it's, we, so we have a very simple format uh, and I always post about this. I'm happy to share. Um, I want to receive messages saying, thank you. I've just landed this uh, tech radar link. Uh, we have the intro. So this is an interesting trick that nobody is using. So we have the title of the email and then you have the first line of the email. These two are the sales, this is where you sell your press release. The title is what you only see in the list. And then the first line, it gives you a second opportunity to further sell your pitch, right? Because that's going to be shown as a preview of the email in most email inboxes. The title should be, of course, catchy. It should be short and straight to the point. And then the first line as well should add extra value to the title. It's almost like a YouTube thumbnail. It's the, the title is the thumbnail. And then the first line is the description. Uh, that you have on a YouTube video, it's exactly the same. You have two opportunities to capture the attention of journalists and, and this should be leveraged to the maximum. It's, it's really good for open rates. We sometimes have like 40, 50, even 60% open rates on some emails if we cleverly craft, you know, the, these two lines. And then you have, you know, a three bullet points intro. If you go to, you know, the Express or New York Post or any other major publication, you will see the format is usually, they have the title, they have an image, and then they have, yeah, three bullet points that outline almost like they compress the whole article into three bullet points. And that's how the press release should be as well, like leverage the, the top to, again, further sell 
your story, your pitch to the journalist as they open the email. Just compress everything in three lines and then start introducing the client and then start presenting either the expert quote or the data. And then uh, at the end, you must specify the methodology. It's, it's very important to really just show off how, how you've done the study because uh, journalists will not trust you any, uh, like any other way. If you don't have a proper methodology, journalists will say, what's this? Like, why would I trust this? So outline down to the finest detail uh, how you conducted the research, uh, show off all the, um, of the sources of the information, of the data sources, and make sure journalists understand they have almost like no questions. And, and then you, you send it out. So that's how the format is. Uh, what, what email address do you use to actually send the email? Is it by your agency or would you use the actual client's email address? Yeah, we use, we use the agency email, yes. So it's, it's our own email address that we use uh, instead of the client's email address. It would be very unscalable to having to get the clients to modify the DNS settings for their domain name to set us up with a proper email that we use in our system, or even to just add it to Roxil or Cision, because Roxil and Cision has got like proper, highly scalable email delivery uh, service. It's really good. But then you would have to modify, sometimes you'd have to modify DNS settings of the domain name to, to make sure that the, the emails are being delivered properly. Um, so it would not be viable. And also, journalists already start trusting an agency if they provide lots of stories. The agency is actually more credible if they send the email rather than the, the company who commissioned the research, right? So it's, it is an advantage to use the agency email because journalists will trust you more. They're like, hey, these guys are, they have research department, they have compliance departments, they have press release approval departments, and it's all being polished. And they trust you more when they know you're an agency. Yeah, that makes total sense. And then what sort of conversion rate do you expect? I know you mentioned that you get about 40 or 50% open rate sometimes. How many emails do you have to send before you get featured in a publication? It, it really depends. It really depends on the story. It depends on the timing of the story. If it's a reactive PR, conversion rate goes to the roof because we know every journalist will be writing about if Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg fights, everyone will write about that topic. Therefore, uh, the conversion rates are higher. If it's almost like, I, I, was, I would use the word like boring data study that's being done every, like it's being covered every, every six months by the press and the conversion rate tends to be lower. But then we can just play the numbers game and just keep on pitching, keep on re-angling. It's sometimes it's 100 emails. Sometimes it's 2,000 emails. It really depends on the story. But I would say anything below, so you would not want to send below 500 emails any story. It will just not get the traction that you want. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, so it is a numbers game. Probably yep. not to the same degree that outreach is, but it's still a numbers game with PR. The thing I found... And I've only really got experience with Hara, I would say. But the thing I found with Hara is sometimes you don't get those backlinks back until maybe six, nine, 12 months later. This is why we don't sell it as a service anymore, because clients yeah. hate How long does it typically take to, to get featured? Again, it's a, it depends on the type of those. If it's a reactive, it can be in one hour. If wow. it's a data piece, it can be three months. So we always say as a deadline for our delivery is six to eight weeks, but sometimes it can be even three months. Because as you said, you, it's not like a blogger outreach. Some, in the past, we had some clients who confused our service. And it is completely on us. So if they are watching this, it's completely on us because we were not 100% clear enough. This is not a guest post service where we have a control over the deadlines and everything. They thought, oh, when is my article going to get published? It, we will deliver. It's a range. It's not an exact date. It's not, hey, like, it's going to be next Friday. Like, it doesn't work like that, right? So it's always, it's got to be a range. But yeah, it can be between one day for a reactive piece or even three months for a bigger data piece that you have to re-angle 50 times for 50 states and then keep on pitching until, keep on changing the story, keep on adapting it. Yeah, it's, again, it's a very wide range of a timeline. Is it typically your DR90s and your DR80s that you're getting? Not always. There are, so the stories are being picked up by all news outlets. So we just go to Roxy and whichever journalists have written uh, about topics, we pitch it regardless of their DR. So sometimes it can be DR50 or uh, DR90 or DR80 or uh, DR30. So we have a healthy mix of, of you know, every type of publication because it's what Roxy and these media database tools provide. They are like this 
publishers who go and sign up there to receive stories from agencies. And we just select everyone. We don't, we, it would not be viable for us to say, oh, only we'll pitch only the R50 websites. Even if you would do that, you will still be picked up by the R30 websites because sometimes the New York Post publishes something and the small sites will be like, oh, that's an interesting story. I found it on New York Post. Let me write about this in the smaller publication. So it's literally impossible to avoid any, any publication because once the story is out and once any news outlet has picked it up, then anyone can just write about it. And then once you've actually pitched the journalist, are you chasing that up? Are you following up with them several times or do you just yep. read it? Yeah, we follow up in a few days. We are saying, hey, have you seen the story? Do you need anything else? And then we even resend it after a few weeks. If, if nothing landed, we just keep on resending the, the story. Nice. But you've pretty much guided us through the whole process. There. Number one, reverse engineer the publications. Number two, use tools like Cision or Rockseal. From there, write the pitch in their style of writing using the tips you talked about and then follow up. But it might take a bit of time, could be anywhere between one hour and a few months before that article gets published, depending on how good the story is. Before we move on, is there anything else you want to say on the process? Because that was super bad. I think I just have to set the expectations that <clears throat> some stories will not land and it's normal. We just have to re redo the story and try to find a different angle. So just setting the expectations of not. If anyone's trying this and they will not get traction, don't be upset. Oh, this is not for me, blah, blah, blah. It is. It is how it is. And just keep on going because eventually you will figure it out. So just don't give up if two or three stories don't even land anything because it's normal. We had 30 stories that landed nothing. And we are so, we are, I, I was literally crying in office. Like, why does nobody care about our stories? Like, it's normal at the beginning and just keep on going. Yeah, I actually, I think that's a good lesson of resilience. One thing I read about you actually was like, you work 16 or 18 hours a day, right? So, some many days, yeah, many days, yes. So I have almost a deal with my wife. Um, like some days I'm flexible. I can just take the half day off. But in many days I'm like, hey, I need to be, I need to be from morning till evening in office because I just want to immerse myself into, into the work. When you do those long days, when you just go through, things you might I know those days it's yeah, yeah. like when you have to leave at four o'clock oh, okay I got a short day so I'm just gonna procrastinate but when you have a big day I'm here I'm, I'm here for the fight I'm here for the war now today and you just keep on you know executing like crazy so yeah some days I do like very long days from seven until until 10 in the evening or from 6 30 until 10 in the evening they are so good they're yeah, so valuable like this. it's so good you, you feel you are probably the same when you achieve something during the day. It's the best feeling in the world. Like when you do something and you have a big output, <clears throat> there's nothing, nothing can compare it to that feeling of I've done something today. I've been, I've contributed something today, like big. And it's so valuable and it's so good for the, for the soul as well, I think. I think the good thing about what we all do is that it's almost tangible, right? So you can see the output. Like for example, yep. if you land a backlink from a really high DR, website that's amazing you can see it it's tangible or for example if you put out a youtube video and it flies you like nothing feels better than that one out of ten statistic on youtube yeah indeed indeed um i have to level up my youtube game because you are with the youtube videos of course you you smashed it there Thank but you. Th the same feeling is with linkedin so with, with my linkedin when i post sometimes i spend half a day on doing a, making a post and as you said with the youtube video it's just it's such a good feeling when people love it and with People say, oh, this is really good. It's valuable. That's, that's an interesting one. So you spend half a day on one post on LinkedIn? Sometimes I do, yeah. Wow. So, because sometimes I do like big, big case studies and I have to go into our systems, find uh, the information about the campaign, find, write the post and then re-angle the post, take screenshots of, of publications. Sometimes I redo screenshots like three, four times every image. So yeah, it does. And not always. It doesn't always take a half a day. Sometimes it takes half an hour. Uh, or sometimes I'm in the shower and I have an idea, I quickly post something like two lines and it gets good traction. But it, yeah, sometimes I spend, yeah, hours on a post. That's impressive though, because I think a lot of people look at how to automate it or how to do it quickly, but actually it's all about quality. Yeah, indeed, indeed. It's, it's, it's standing out with the value and the entertainment. I think most of my posts are a combination of entertainment and information, like education. And it's hard to create something that really like the masses resonate with. It's not easy. It's uh, it's not a two-click solution. It's like you have to dig 
deep in the rabbit hole of your mind and make sure something that you, the thing that you post is going to be resonating with people. I think it's a great shout out, especially for a lot of people who are watching this and maybe they got hit by some of the recent updates. Is if you diversify like this and you get in traffic from SEO or LinkedIn, or even if you create a great LinkedIn post, you can post it on Facebook groups or Twitter as well, right? That's what I do. I post on LinkedIn and Twitter and then on some Facebook groups. I always, especially on Facebook groups, I always have to make sure that there's like zero promotion in there. I don't want to, even on LinkedIn, I don't want to promote. I don't want to be like, hey, buy from us. It's always got to be value to the user. But yeah, I always distribute it wide. Feel free to post in our Facebook group anytime, mate. We will let some oh, I... people in there. I'll put a link in the description as well in case anyone else wants yeah, to that's... Yeah, of course. What's the Facebook uh, group's name? It's pretty keyword optimized, I'll be honest with you. It's called SEO Backlinks AI and Chat GPT. Nice one, man. Let's get the buzz in there. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. It's good. So what about with editing Chat GPT content? Do you even use Chat GPT for content or do you manually edit it? What's your process there? <clears throat> I have to admit... I'm behind with ChatGPT in terms of, I know many, many even PR agencies are using it. I've done a campaign, which, which is still not out. It's going to go out probably in a week, but I've done it by getting ChatGPT to suggest me some quotes, ex expert quotes, and then I'm going to share that with the client, of course. But we are literally not using ChatGPT for our content. We are experimenting with it, but unfortunately, and we should, I know we should use it. It would probably give us a big advantage, but. In order to use it at a large, on a large team, we need like proper viable processes first. So that's what I'm figuring out now. Is it, is it going to help? Is it going to speed up the process? Which probably the answer is probably yes, but we are not, I'm not using it for active campaign creation. Maybe some ideation, maybe the team is using them for some ideation. I think they have been using it for just coming up with some, some extra ideas based on what we already have, but I, for this specific press release that's going to go out, and that's one that I'm doing personally, I usually don't get involved into in the actual active creation of the press releases or of the work because I'm not reliable. I sometimes have 20, 20 meetings in a day or you know, 10 meetings in a day, and I just cannot deliver what I said. Oh, assign me this campaign, I'll deliver. And then after two weeks, I say, can, can we reassign this to somebody else? Because I'm literally in a swamp with meetings. But I do almost like on a hobby level, I do some campaigns to test our systems, test our processes. And this one is one example. So I've just got ChatGPT to create an interesting, um, I'm not going to say the campaign name because somebody might do it in the meantime, but it's a campaign for a gambling client. And ChatGPT gave me like the essence of it, like the foundation. And then I went in, I put it in Grammarly, I put it in a Hemingway editor, and I've started editing it there manually and rewriting lots of, you, we know already how, how ChatGPT content feels like when you read it. So just re-editing it to like proper manual one or two hours editing on the whole press release to make sure it is a human output at the end. And that's what I've been, you know, experimenting with, but no active, uh, no active ChatGPT content yet on the team level. Are these links no followed, typically with PR or? No, I think many people believe that, oh, these are all no follow. Absolutely not. They are a mix of both. Sometimes it's 50-50, sometimes it's 30-70, and sometimes it's 70-30. So it's a healthy mix of both. Sometimes we have, we had a link on entrepreneur.com for our client, BetMGM. It's a betting client uh, with a link on entrepreneur.com. Um, it's a do follow. But sometimes it's a no follow. It really depends on. I think every department has got their own kind of methodology of do, do we do outbound linking by adding the nofollow or, or taking off the nofollow. It's really a matter of, I think, of the policies of, of each department. Sometimes we've seen a link, uh, a do follow link on BBC. We had a pothole campaign for one of for Smart Survey and it was a do, do follow link on the BBC. But the other time, the Express, sometimes it's a nofollow. So, it, but, but I think it just creates a healthy mix of both. And I think that's what you would actually want as an SEO to have both, you would not want just 80% do follow because that will really be a red flag to, to Google. Even though it's earned, there are algorithms that are not human supervised. They, they, they will be like, hey, this, the ratio is not normal here. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. It forms part of a natural backlink profile. Indeed. Indeed. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to say before you go? I think that's, uh, you know, hopefully people took away some, something and hopefully they will start searching like site. Operator, I think that's a starting point of, you know, of a, a healthy PR campaign. Just dive in um, and explore, be an explorer of the news. 
Actually, I wrote your process down and I'll put it inside the description in case anyone wants to follow this. I think that's really valuable. Also very actionable. So yeah, I appreciate it. Awesome. And what's the best way to get in touch with you? Just link, LinkedIn or just Google my name, Ferry. It's, I know it's a mirrored, but Ferry Cassoni and I'll be on LinkedIn. I'll be uh, even on Twitter now. Recently, I've started being more active on Twitter and, and YouTube. I have to wait, man. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Like I, I, anyone who's negative, like anyone who's even like slightly say, oh, even if they say like, the silly word is even triggering me to block them. Anyone who's negative, it's, I just block them. And I filtered out quite a few people and now it becomes quite a positive environment. But yeah, I, I, do, never, I never really block people on Twitter. Maybe I should try. Yeah, well, of course. Yeah, eliminate any negative people. Why, why would we have negative people who, who are allowed to just spew their, you know, negativity there? Like, let's be kind, let's be positive. It works. It works well. Yeah, that's it. I try. I think that's what we do on this channel is like positive people in there. Indeed. It Indeed. attracts the right people in. We've got a great team. Absolutely. Ex exactly. And uh, I have to talk to you to let's have a drink on in, in Vietnam. Talk about YouTube. I have to level up my YouTube game. I'm always, I'm like puzzled. Should I do what Julian is doing, posting daily? Or should I do more highly edited videos that take two, three days to put together? by our team. I should probably go in and just share everything by screen share. And maybe that's the way forward. I have to figure out YouTube, not figure out. I have to just commit to YouTube. I think that's the problem. The lack of genuine commitment for YouTube. Yeah. The biggest differentiator I've seen between the people that do really well on YouTube and the people that never really get any traction is that, not, and this is not just in SEO, it's in loads of different industries. Normally they start off with a 30 day challenge and they do a YouTube video every single day. And that just takes them to a whole new level because when you perform at that level of intensity, you get new ideas, you learn very quickly. The difference between your first video and your last one is insane. And then yeah. also you have that habit of publishing consistently. Absolutely. I have to get down. I have to do a challenge with you to hold myself because I don't have anyone say, oh, Ferry, you said you're going to post daily. And like, I don't want to let people down. I don't want to let this person down. I have to either post on LinkedIn saying I'm going to do a post a day. And then if thousands of people see that, I have to keep my promise or something that really holds me accountable. So whatever happens, I'll just make a video a day. Even if it's like a one minute, two minute video, I'll have to post, uh, as you said, play the numbers game to get into the habit of becoming good at it. That's how you become good with something where you keep on doing it. Yeah, a hundred percent. The other cool, the other cool thing about the whole process is like creates more content for your other channels, right? So there might be a workflow that you talk about in your video that you can actually translate into an amazing LinkedIn post or an amazing tweet. I posted something from one of my videos yesterday, just like very simple four-step process. Ended up getting 13,000 impressions straight off the bat. You, do, you can repurpose it to any format. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I'm super powerful for that. And yeah, I'm excited for you, man. We'll, we'll catch up about it soon. I'm almost like feeling responsible now because I told you. You're locked in now. Yeah, you can't get out of it. No, just really? kidding. <laughs> I want to, you know, I want to be, yeah, be more like, feel like a sense of responsibility for this, you know, for YouTube. Yeah, there's other things I've tried for accountability in the past as well that work pretty well. Like, for example, on, you won't believe this, but on Fiverr.com, you can actually hire an accountability coach. Oh, wow. Really? And yeah, and then you'll have a call with him each week. And you'll say exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to prove it. So for example, YouTube, anyone can check that. And then you're held accountable to someone. You're never going to jump on that call saying, no, I did. You're not, I don't think you're the type of person that would. Wow. I think wow. Okay. Again. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. I have to explore this uh, option as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good one. Definitely. Work for me. Okay. Let me send me a link to, to that person. Maybe I can oh. use this person. All oh, right. Sounds good. Thanks so much then. It was a pleasure to be here and hopefully everyone got great information. Cheers. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. So thanks so much for watching. If you want to get in touch with Ferry, you can check out his website, searchintelligence.co.uk. Links in the comments in the description. And if you do want to book in a free SEO strategy session where you can get more leads, traffic and sales using SEO, feel free to book that in. I've broken down the whole process and included a link to my Facebook group inside the description of this video. Thanks for watching again. Bye-bye.